The military is a vital instrument of national power, shaped into different components such as the land, maritime, air and special forces to execute specific mission types. This TV documentary focuses on the regiment specialty and the special forces in the Nigerian Air Force. The Nigerian Air Force in its 54 years history, no doubt, has grown in size and equipment holding to better fulfill its statutory obligation of defending the territorial integrity of the country by air. However, in spite of its growth and expansion, the Nigerian Air Force Regiment, established in 1978, was relatively ill-equipped with inadequate manpower due to years of neglect. We focused more on uh, air power projection at the expense of air power protection and therefore on conducting an assessment of what the situation was on ground in 2015 we realized that there is a very wide gap between our air power projection capability and air power protection capability and we realized that uh, unless we bridge that gap we may run into uh, the problem we ran into in, 20, in December 2013 when our base in Maiduguri was attacked. So what I did was to just simply say, look, why don't we bridge the gap? And the, the, there is no way you bridge the gap without training. And hence our decision to really give, pay special attention to uh, force protection training, which involves the uh, force protection in critical air and ground environment uh, personnel as well as the special forces personnel. Today, the regiment's specialty under the leadership of Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar has not only been reorganized but adequately equipped and its personnel retrained both home and abroad to effectively defend Nigerian Air Force bases and other critical national assets against attacks as well as emerging security threats in the country. The importance of the regiment in an air force cannot be overemphasized. The regiment is basically the ground combat element of the Nigerian Air Force. We are like a hybrid of the Nigerian Army Artillery in the air defense role and the uh, Nigerian Army Infantry in the ground combat role. So basically what we do are defensive and offensive operations. The defensive elements are the people we call force protection. Our nickname is bulwarks, which means a wall of protection. So basically what we do is to protect our bases, protect our airfields, our aircraft, and everything that relates to us projecting force. So we force protect in order for the Air Force to force project. And, um, um, we also protect people we call very important persons like ELSA's commanding, the chief of air staff, um, ex-chief of air staff and chief of defense staff. Uh, there's a group of people called the VIP protection squad. So that's what we do basically in the defensive role. Now in the offensive role, we have a group of people called the special operations force. They have higher combat training. They're able to operate independently in small groups to do strike missions and come back. But basically, their job, because the best way to protect is actually standoff distances. You know, one of the challenges of bases is that they are permanent, so they, they are susceptible to attack. So what we do is that the Special Operations Force, when we identify a threat 40 kilometers, 100 kilometers away from the base, the Special Operations Force go out there, they take it out and come back. So they are a force multiplier for the Air Force Regiment and the Air Force as a whole. As part of reorganization effort for effective, efficient and timely employment of air power, the Special Operations Command, SOC, Bochi, was created with its component units, which include 201 Composite Group, Bochi, in Bochi State, 205 Combat Search and Rescue Group, Kirang, in Plateau State, 207 Quick Response Group, Gusou in Zamfara State. 
209 Quick Response Group, Ipetu Ijesha in Oshun State. 211 Quick Response Group, Owere in Imo State. And subsequently, the Quick Response Wings, QRW, were established. 21 Quick Response Wing, Agatu in Benue State. 22 Quick Response Wing, Doma in Nasara State. And 23 Quick Response Wing, Gembu in Taraba State. Our desire is to have a professional and disciplined force. Now, professionalism has several dimensions, one of which is you must have the right structure. If the structure is wrong, you are not likely to have a professional force. And when we came in 2015, we saw that the structure, the Air Force structure at that time, was not adequate to deal with the kind of challenges that we are seeing. And we took the decision to establish the Special Operations Command and we thank the Honourable Minister of Defence and the CDS who are, were part of the Air Council that approved the establishment of this command. And the reason for establishing the command, like I said, is primarily to deal with the emerging threats that we are seeing. If you have a crisis in JAWS and the Air Force is asked to contribute, who are we going to contribute? Our aircraft technicians or air traffic controllers or, or the admin personnel or air police? No. We wanted a, a group that is really capable, that has some level of training over and above the usual military training given to uh, Air Force uh, personnel so that they can be able to substantially fit into the learning environment where they are going to operate. And so, hence the decision. We have to have a command that deals with these issues. If there is crisis in Benoist State or there is crisis, you don't, I don't have to carry aircraft technician to go there. Because if you do that, it will affect the stability of aircraft. There will be so many uh, uh, gaps. And at the end of the day, they are not even likely to be effective because they have basic military training. So how would they fit into an infantry unit that is properly trained? They will be disadvantaged because he has not been trained. He has been given the basic training to be a military man. But now we are trying to employ him over and above. So for that to happen, you need to have a specialized unit that are given additional training, that they can fit into whatever is happening outside there to deal with those internal security challenges. So that was the reason of establishing the Special Operations Command. That's a command that is supposed to bridge the gap between air power projection and air power protection. The establishment of these units has enhanced the Nigerian Air Force response capability in dealing with national security threats in collaboration with sister services and other security agencies. If there is any crisis anywhere now and Air Force is required to contribute, we just task that command. We don't have to start mobilizing. They are close by. Go, 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 go. You quickly get them deployed and they move together with their army counterparts or the police or whatever setting you have on ground and they are able to be effective. And I can tell you that in the last year and a half or thereabout, these units have contributed significantly to our efforts at ensuring that Nigeria is secure. In the same vein, and as part of deliberate efforts by the Nigerian Air Force under the leadership of Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar to reposition the Nigerian Air Force into a highly professional force capable of responding effectively and timely to Nigeria's security imperatives, the Nigerian Air Force has continued to build human capacity in all areas to enhance the Nigerian Air Force operational capability. Individually and collectively as students of Special Forces was one public 2017. Congratulations. In light of this, the current Nigerian Air Force leadership in 2015 took a bold step to initiate a training program 
in collaboration with Israel and British military advisory training team to develop special forces capabilities suited for air row missions. Size your start point. Aside from the local training, in conjunction with Israel and the British military assistant training team, some of the elements of the Nigerian Air Force Special Operations Force have also been trained in Belarus and Pakistan. In the last uh, three years or thereabout, we have trained over a thousand of those forces. In barely three years of establishment, the Nigerian Air Force Special Operations Forces are now contributing maximally to ongoing efforts to bring peace to the troubled parts of the country. This is in addition to bridging the gap between the force projection and force protection by revolutionizing Nigerian Air Force Base Defense System. Beyond even force protection, what we are doing now is the excess uh, capacity that we have, we are utilizing it for the security of Nigeria. And that's why you have special forces, uh, Air Force Special Forces, participating in the war, even in the Northeast, under the Armed Forces Special Forces uh, units, where you have Air Force Special Forces personnel, Navy Special Forces, as well as the Army Special Forces, that are fighting hand in hand in some sectors in Operation Lafayette Dole. Uh, similarly, we have contributed about 300 of these Special Forces in Benue State under the Wild Stroke Operation Wild Stroke, which is a DHQ operation. So they are also adding value. In Zamfara State also, there have been a lot of banditry and so on. And when the DHU decided to send an intervention force of about 1,000, I think about 300 of those are Nigerian Air Force Special Forces. Remember also that we have deployed Special Forces to Taraba State when the crisis there also erupted to support their army counterparts in ensuring that people are allowed to live their dreams and live their lives and nobody is killed for whatever reason. The training of Special Operations Force Unit is considered the toughest training in the world, which involves many down, intensive down. drills that will push the trainees to their limits. When you come in as a regiment personnel, you go through the basic training and other basic other regiment courses. But as an SF, you, have, you first of all indicate interest that you want to become an SF. Because the, the special forces operations are high level operations that requires a lot of risk. So you have to make up your mind that yes, you want to go into this risk taking operation. So then you go through some series of tests and examination and training before you are now qualified to become an SF. Basically all regiment personnel live completely above board, but you have to go the extra mile. Because here now, you know that all your operations, all your tasks will be high risk taking tasks. The training is preceded by the selection and screening process at the Regiment Training Center in Kaduna, which takes about two weeks. The screening process enables the selection team to choose the best regiment candidate for the Special Operations Force Unit. The selection process is divided into different stages. The first stage involves medical examination of eye. Ear, denta, muscular, and other tests to determine the fitness of the nominees by the Nigerian Air Force medical team. Also, a psychologist is involved to evaluate each trainee in order to ascertain his or her mental ability. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. The second stage of the selection process involves cross, cross, drills cross, to determine cross, cross. braveness and courage. Cross. 
strong physical ability and mental capacity, fast responsibility, aggression and endurance. Don't let him pass out of the range. Weapon handling skills and technical ability. Command ability and ability to handle the unknown. During the training, Special Operation Forces trainees go through long marches of up to 90 kilometers or 120 kilometers. There is also an evaluation committee every week to determine who should continue with the course. Those who score above the required criteria will finish the course. Well, I go and I advise you to get that tally before getting back to this place. If your tally should fall off, go back and collect on that one. And your time is counting. Do you understand? Yes, sir! No matter how big the man is, if I have the beat from here, I can turn it. I look at the rear, you will see the ferry pin will ride up to hit the base of the bomb. The Special Operations Forces are equipped with some set of skills to enable them conduct special missions remotely from home while having full self-support. The uniqueness of Special Operations Force is that they can operate anywhere and anytime ready at all times. Usually, the Special Operations Forces are tasked with the most complex operations. Planning for such operations can be for a long duration in order to ensure a perfect execution of the mission. As such, every single detail is taken into consideration, leaving no gaps behind. Consequently, when operating, Special Forces must know how to rapidly adjust themselves to different circumstances and must be very dynamic. Many a times, there is a change in the operational factors and the operatives must think outside the box to achieve mission goals. The Combat Search and Rescue courses focuses on 12 subject areas. These areas are Endurance Training, Medical, Map Reading and Navigation, We are going to patrol to our RV. Unarmed Combat, Communication and Weapon Handling. Other areas include Search Theory and Tactics, Field Tactics, General Aircraft Orientation, Mountaineering, Survivor Evade, Resist and Escape Training, and Swimming. After training, the Nigerian Air Force Special Operations Forces are deployed to operational units across the country for further unit 
and environment acclimatization trainings before deployment to combat. In order to execute successful special operations, emphasis is placed on the commanders. The team leaders up to the unit commanders must excel in battle procedures. Currently, Nigerian Air Force Special Operations Forces are still operating jointly with other services special forces in the northeast of Nigeria. They have also conducted independent operations such as Operation Extra Safe in Bochi and Exercise Hard Strike in Kaduna. The value of this elite group of individuals is their ability to conduct covert and swift operations to cater to national security contingencies. The Nigerian Air Force on the 6th of December 2018 held the graduation ceremony of various regiment courses, including the Force Protection in Complex Air Ground Environment Course, Special Forces Instructors Course, and Combat Search and Rescue Course. The Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, was at the Regiment Training Center Kaduna as the guest of honor for the combined graduation ceremony of various regiment courses. A total of 769 completed the various courses and would be deployed to the front lines to beef up the strength of troops in the fight against insurgency and other forms of criminalities while also improving Nigerian Air Force base defense architecture. As part of the ceremony, there were practical demonstrations by the graduating students of the various courses covering countering of low-level air defense threats, insertion and extraction, combat search and rescue exercises simulating the rescue of a downed pilot in a denied environment, as well as an ambush denied drill. With assistance from the British Military Advisory Training Team and 4th Troop Team, the Nigerian Air Force has in the last three years trained 2,251 personnel in force protection in complex air ground environment, special forces instructors, combat search and rescue, and special forces, significantly boosting Nigerian Air Force force protection and special force capability in line with the capacity building initiative of the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar. Also, on 15 March 2019, Nigerian Air Force graduated another 175 Special Forces personnel of Course 4 2019 in asymmetric warfare at the Regiment Training Center Kaduna. Significantly, this is the first time in the history of the Nigerian Air Force that Special Force personnel would be trained wholly by Nigerian Air Force instructors, thereby actualizing one of the key drivers of the Chief of the Air Staff's vision of reinforcing a culture of self-reliance and prudent management of resources. The Panthers, as unveiled by the Director of Regiment, Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, Air Commodore Babatunde Phillips, highlighted how the specialty had been transformed over the past four years with massive capacity building initiatives from a business trend of less than 300 in 2015 to over 1,000 along with 44 Special Force instructors also recently trained. If you have the right environment and the right strategic direction, which has been given by the federal government, the president and commander-in-chief, then it is easy for you to simply key into it and try to uh, do the best that you can to take advantage of that environment in order to move the Air Force to the next level, not only the Air Force, but indeed the country. With the continued support of the federal government, the Nigerian Air Force would continue to carry out its constitutional responsibility of protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria. The Nigerian Air Force, willing, able and ready. <laughs>